And we're back again. So, while I was off at dinner, I was thinking about the possibilities of where I should go to uh, figure out how to get the key out of that door. And then suddenly I realized I picked up a newspaper. A newspaper I couldn't read. Why not shove that under the door? I don't know if it'll work, but let's find out. It, it sounds like a logical idea, and this game has been very logical thus far. So, let's see what we can do. There we go, and now, ah, we've got the key, and I guess the newspaper is completely useless now. So, let's take out that key and get through this door. Not bad at all. Uh-oh. Whoa. Alright. Whatever happened here, someone must have been in a great deal of pain. Ugh. What's this? There's only one green-blooded, land-dwelling creature big enough to lose this much blood, and I don't see many sink lizards hanging about. Skink lizards. Hmm. Interesting. From the debris, I'd say something huge broke into the room not too long ago. There's blood and slime everywhere. Hmm. Nothing there. Nothing there. Probably useless to open these because I can actually see into them. But you never know. Might be something. But apparently not. There is, however, a couple more things here. It looks like there's a paper of some sort. Perhaps some kind of jars? Yes, but interesting. It's a collection of research on a species of worm with some scrawled notes in the margins. Alright, let's take a look at this. Professor, <clears throat> there are biomedical journals of Dr. J. Petries, uh, MSc, PhD, uh, completed between the dates of 30th March 1969 and 1st January 1972 at the Northwestern Research Station within Northwestern Iron Mine with the permission of Delta Mining Corp. Replication of selected extracts left at the disposal of mine foremen. Subject of study, Guinness uh, Raya Copila, or Cophelia, I should say. Uh, commonly gray rockworm. Hmm. Aim to investigate the abnormal presence of the caddis. Is that caddis? I think that's caddis. In the Greenland rock. It's kind of hard to read because. Letters are a bit scrunched there, but whatever. Anyway, uh, method. Collection of samples. If, n <clears throat> if indeed they can be identified correctly. Standard series of testing, observation, and dissection. Personal notes. Upon arrival at the mining facility, I was immediately stunned by the sheer volume of fauna that finds a way of life down here. Despite the conditions or despite the conditions. In general, one would assume that species whose natural habitat is past a certain depth would find the intrusion of human activity too great a threat to remain in place. However, almost uh, the exact opposite seems to be the case in this instance. 
It is curious that certain areas of the mine appear to be entirely without life of any kind, and yet other deeper areas are teeming, and where and were the situation permitting, I would embrace the opportunity to commit further time to the study of these organisms. However, the purpose of my stay here shall continue to be the Guinness Ryacopphilia. That is difficult to pronounce, and I am probably pronouncing it wrong. Me? Ah, finally found... Er, finally some writing paper. Look at me. Just using up the pages to scrawl down whatever comes into my head. <laughs> what is this stuff anyway? Some kind of research paper? No matter, it's paper all the same. I can finally record what's been happening down here for, I suppose, about a year now. It must be near the end of 2001 by now. Huh. I wonder when Christmas was. No matter. Too tired to write now. We'll rest a little first. Wondering if this is Red talking here. Oh, yeah. Professor, me. I see what's going on now. Professor, samples collected. The collection process has been far easier than I anticipated. The setup of the artificial environment for the rock worm went without hitch and the specimens themselves are so abundant as to make keeping them out far more challenging than containing them. Hmm, interesting. So, the more I'm reading, the more I'm thinking the scientists did something down here that they shouldn't have, or uncovered something anyway. They are all of healthy size, perhaps even beyond recorded size, and I can only assume that this is due to some lack of natural predators down here. Specimens are as follows. Three adults in artificial habitat, two larval infants dead. Well, maybe he didn't, I don't know. Well, we'll find out, I hope. Me, I've been down here for two days now was meaning to record events every day, but was too busy securing the area. I've used some supplies from the old mining system to wall myself in here. It seems as safe a place as any. So those things should at least stay put for a little while. To that end, seems I've had a pretty lucky stumbling here. All the old research is about something similar to what's been haunting me ever since I escaped the shelter four days ago. Don't get me wrong, after what... after what they did to me back there, I'd rather be facing anything else, and after almost a year of fighting for our lives, we didn't really stand a chance anyway. I don't know how many are left inside. But, this is good. These notes might have some way to fight the things. The rockworms that followed me here, I don't know how they knew I was coming, or how they managed to follow me in the dark. Maybe I can walk, or work that out now. I've found some old newspaper clippings, I guess. Well, I'm, I'm sure that the reason they can follow you is because they live underground, so they're used to the darkness, whereas you aren't. But anyways, I guess they're referring to this mine. I had no idea it was so old, so big. I can see now why they built that facility here in the first place. A lot of history buried down here. It worries me, though. We'd been resting our all our hopes of rescue on one of the scientists who escaped right near the start of it all. He got out almost as the chaos began, so we figured he might have made it out and brought help, but maybe me and him are due the same fate. I must record what's been going on. 
give the world the answers it needs, so it doesn't fall prey to what's been released down here. But first, I need to worry about myself. Find a way out of here, and work out how to kill these worm things. Of course, Red could also be the father, and he's just worming his way down here, and he's gone crazy. I don't know. Hoping to find out, but anyway. Professor, observations. The creatures are indeed larger than has previously been recorded. The juveniles seem to still be growing far beyond their natural limits. Although the adults have now expired, I will watch with interest to see the lifespan or what the lifespan is of this particular subspecies. The worms appear to have three senses, as would be validated by previous research. Taste, smell, and an extremely sensitive sense of touch. So they don't have any eyes, they don't care about the darkness. Anyways, um, which allows them to detect vibrations in the rock in the same way that human eye senses beams of light and processes them into spatial images. Their natural prey is insects smaller than themselves, and heaven help those insects because the worm is a vicious and efficient killer. Me. He's wrong. They have no sense of smell. Today I attempted to distract them with a concoction I found lying around, but to no avail. However, it does seem that they detect movement via vibrations, which would explain how they can see in the dark. Damn, there's almost no way to escape them down here. I'm on their territory now. Lifespan is three days and counting. I can still hear them outside the wall, as an extra precaution, I've locked myself in the smaller study area. Uh, connected to the main lab room. If they get through that wall, I doubt this door will stop them, but it's better than nothing. Barely. Professor. Uh, conclusions. The subspecies of genus Ryacophilia is highly adapted for its environment. If released above the surface, it seems likely that it would quickly destroy the existence or the existing rockworm population, and soon after the population would grow to a size far outstripping its own food supplies. Given its increase in size and lifespan already due to unknown conditions, I would hypothesize that the worm if left in such conditions for a reasonable period of time, perhaps three or four thousand years, could grow up to a further three inches, yeah, making it a total of almost one foot long. Let's say that uh, that's silly and it's probably been way longer than you thought all along. But anyway, However, should those conditions change, or indeed magnify, physical evolution could occur far more rapidly. Hmm, okay, I can agree with that. Me. It's the fifth day today, and I swear they have begun to surround my location. I can't tell whether or not they have breached the wall I built, but I'm certain they've entered whatever sur whatever area surrounds this room. The future looks increasingly bleak. I intended to record here the events of the past year in the hope that perhaps what occurred could be contained or driven away. Now I realize I could write all I wanted. No one will ever make it down here to read it. So why write this now? Good question. I have no answer. All I do know is, I'd rather take my own life than die at the jaws of those hideous monsters. I've tied a noose. Those monsters may feed on my corpse, but they won't take my life. <laughs>